In this video, you're gonna learn how to prevent the user from entering empty lines. So if you see here, I'm pressing enter, nothing's happening. So make sure that the user is only entering a valid input. And we're also gonna learn how to forget values uh, after a certain amount. So you're gonna set a max lines remembered. So for example, you'll only remember 30 lines and you'll see this A up here. If I start typing a bunch, eventually it'll get deleted. If I keep typing, and gone, and now we're back to S's. So you can set a customizable amount of max lines remembered that you will continue to forget lines after that amount of input has been entered to kind of help free up memory as your game continues to go on. Let's get started. So in the last video, we started adding functionality to scroll to the bottom, but one thing we didn't catch is that if you try to enter a blank line, you're gonna just be able to enter it uh, indefinitely. So we need to make sure that the user can only actually enter something or it's only re responded to if there's actually content on that line to respond to. So the simple way that we're gonna do that is just in our game script here, in our on input text entered function where we're handling user input, we're gonna say if new text, oops, if new text dot empty, which is a built-in function on strings that returns a Boolean uh, true if there's no text in that string. So if new text is empty, we're just gonna return. So we're not gonna do anything if the user enters just an empty line of text. So if I play this now and just try entering, nothing's there. But if I type something, we can still type. But if I just hit enter with an empty line, there's nothing there. So that's an easy way to add some handling to make sure that you can't type empty lines. So the next thing we wanna do is add a customizable max lines remembered variable so that we don't keep track of an infinite amount of lines and, and keep a bunch of memory we don't need. So in order to do that, we're gonna introduce a new concept in Godot and that's export variables. So below our input response up here, I'm going to type export and then parentheses and I'm going to say int here and then variable max lines remembered and I'm going to default set this to 30. And so what this means, this should all look familiar. We're just creating a variable, we're giving it a type and we're setting it to 30, so it's an integer. But these two things are new. And what export means is the value of this variable can actually be edited in the editor. And it's gonna be unique for each instance of this scene. So if we had a bunch of different games, you could change their max line remembered in the editor for each one and it would be remembered for that specific instance even if they were all different instances. So export is nice because it lets you change it in the editor. So this is what that looks like. You'll now see if I select our game, over on the right, there's a script variable section and we see max lines remembered here and it's set to 30. And so it's populating that with the value we give it here as a default, but I can change it in the editor. So I can set it to be 20 and you'll see it recognizes that this is different than the default value so I can reset it. But if I set it to 20, that's gonna be the value that that variable has. So it lets you adjust the value of certain variables from the editor. It's super nice and a really powerful feature. And we're gonna explore more ways that that's helpful in the future. This is just like one nice way we can use it. So I'm gonna reset this to 30. So, and this right here is giving a type hit to the editor. So if I try and do, because I, I hinted it that it's an integer, if I try to do 30.1, it's gonna round it to the nearest integer. So if I do 20.5, it'll be 21. So type hints are a great way to kind of use some built-in editor functionality to set or to help guide the user in which values they can set and prevent them from setting invalid values. So now that we have our max lines remembered, we need to actually check and make sure that we don't remember more than those lines. And the way we're gonna do that is down here when we add a new line. So in our history rows, when we add a new input response, we're gonna check and see if history rows dot child count, or I think it's get child count. So this is gonna return the number of children in history rows. And we're gonna see if this is greater than our max lines remembered, then we need to delete the earliest lines. And so the way that we can do that is actually take advantage of how Godot structures its scene tree. So whenever you add a child of something, so let, let's actually try this. I'm gonna add some children of our history rows, just input responses. And the you can always guarantee in Godot that the unless they're manually moved, which we're not gonna do. So in our case, because we won't manually move it, we can guarantee this will be true. We can guarantee that the, the children that are farther up in the tree 
are the ones that were first added. So the first element, the first child of our history rows is the one that was first added. And so if we want to forget the earliest lines that the user typed, we can get rid of the nodes or the scenes in our history rows. We can get rid of its earliest children, the ones that are furthest up the tree. So we know that the ones at the bottom, the children that are most recently added are the ones that are at the bottom of the children array and vice versa. The ones added earliest are at the top of that array. So we can take advantage of this by saying, hey, if we have to delete rows, we're going to say var rows to forget. And this is going to be max lines remember, or uh, sorry, this is going to be history rows that get child count minus max lines remembered. So if there are 35 children and we're only remembering 30 lines, this is going to be five. So we're going to get the rows to forget. And then we're going to say four, whoops, four underscore I in range of rows to forget. Range is a function here. And then we're just going to write pass. So what this means is GD script has arrays built into it. You can use a for loop or it has loops built into it. For loops are super nice, but this rows to forget here is an integer, right? We're getting the child, the children, the amount of children that we have in our history rows and our max lines remembered. Those are both integers, but what we're going to say is we want to loop through that many times and do an operation that many times. So to convert a integer into an array of all the integers in that range, you can use Godot's built-in range function. So this is gonna create an integer from zero to, I believe rows, like the number you pass in here, minus one. Either way, it's gonna have the correct number of things in the array, and that's what we care about. So what we can do now is say history rows dot get child, and get child takes an index. Fortunately, we have an index, it's gonna be i, we actually don't want to uh, underscore this. When you prefix a variable with an underscore, it's like telling GD script that it's a private variable. You can still access it. It's not actually private, but it tells the editor not to print an error, for example, if it's unused. So we're going to say for i in range, we're going to get that child that we're currently looking at for this current index, and then we're going to free that child. So we'll type qfree. And qfree is the way in Godot to delete nodes from your scene. It not only removes them from the tree, but it totally deletes them so they're freed from memory. Now, there is just a free function, but you all, almost always want to use QFree because what it does is it cues that node to be deleted as soon as it's safe to do so, which is almost always at the start of the next frame or during the next frame. And so it'll make sure that all the things that that node is being used for, relied on, are finished up and then queued free. You don't have to worry about this t making it take forever for your node to get freed or it's sticking around too long. That's not what, what's going to happen. It's just going to make sure that it's safe for the engine to disengage with that node and get rid of all the connections it has before deleting it. So we're going to go through for our history rows and we're going to get the specific child we're looking at. And remember, for example, if we have 35 children and our max lines remembered as 30, that means we're going to have five rows we need to forget. Range is going to create an array of numbers from zero to four. And because the child array is zero indexed, it's going to work out perfectly here. So we're going to get children zero, one, two, three, and four. And remember, we said that the children at the top with the lowest indices are the ones that were first added. So we're using, we're, we're using features of GD script to make it happen, to make this happen without having to code any special logic. It just works out. So we're gonna go through this range of five or whatever this number is and queue free and delete all of those children. So we'll see this in play now that if I run our game and I'm just gonna type every key on our keyboard. Oh, whoops, I need to actually get rid of these first because we don't want those. And so if I run our game and I'm gonna type every key on our keyboard real quick. Okay, so you'll see here that I've typed pretty much every letter on the keyboard. So we're, we're close to 30. And I started with Q, so I just went across the keyboard. So we've got Q-W-E-R-T-Y, QWERTY, at the top. And now, since we're getting close to 30 lines, if I start typing some, we should start to see these top rows get deleted. So if I type just, again, Q-W-E, we should see, oh, it's still there. Let me do a couple more. Q-W, I'll do, all right, R-T-Y. Now, the Q and the W are gone. So we've gone over 30 rows and the Q and the W are gone. We're left with only the ERTY and everything before. If I type X now, we'll see that that E is gone. R is the most recent one at the top. And if I keep typing stuff, obviously they'll still be deleted. 
and so on. So we've just implemented a way to, to limit how much history can be remembered in our scroll container in order just to make sure we're not continuously adding things and never deleting some of that memory so we don't have thousands and thousands of lines just to kind of keep our game stable and, and not have to worry about remembering so much stuff. So you can adjust this number as needed. It does not have to be 30. You could bump it up to 100. Even 1,000 would probably be fine just depending on your computer. You know, it, it doesn't have to be this low, but I'm just going to keep it there for now for the purposes of our game just to keep things kind of nice and clean. But anyway, I think we'll cap it there for now. But in this tutorial, you've learned how to keep a scroll history and delete things and how to make sure that we're not letting users enter empty lines. So now we're starting to eat a game that has a really nice text input feature. There's lots of stuff that you can do. It feels good. It responds as you would expect. The scroll works as you would expect. It moves you down, but lets you see its history. Things are starting to feel really good and we're ready to start actually adding some actual gaminess, some functionality, some fun to our game. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If it has, a like and subscribe to support the channel are always appreciated. We'd love to have you in our Discord server. The link to that is in the description. You can ask any questions you have about the tutorial there. And if you find my work helpful, donating a coffee on Buy Me a Coffee, also linked to in the description, helps me continue to make great tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.